So question nine then from the 2022 Higher Maths Paper 1. Five mark question, a trig equation, a double angle trig equation. You have to solve this equation here for the five marks. Now you know it's a double angle equation and not the wave equation one because here one of the angles is double the other angle whereas in the wave equation the two angles should be the same. Well, the first step is going to be get that into single angles. So that just means looking up the front if you don't remember it. What does cos 2x turn into in terms of cosines to match this one with single x's? So you look up the front and there's only one you can find that does just cosines. And that's the one that goes 2 cos squared x minus 1. Now doing that gets the first mark. Although they do say in the marking scheme, it gets you the first mark, but only if there's some subsequent working. Well, there's going to be, isn't there? So effectively, just looking up the front gets you the first mark. The other thing is, but they're not penalised for this, you should really be putting these little degree signs in all the time. It's really quite tedious. It's nice that the question's in degrees because you're happier with degrees, but it's annoying you have to meant, or you're, because you're meant to write down the little degree signs all the time. If you ever see a term like cos, Cos x with a degree sign, it means it's in degrees. And if it's got no sign there, it means it's in radians. You don't even need to look at the side. You can tell just by looking at this. The handy thing, though, is the answer will just be a number. That's why it's just got x and there's no degree signs there, because x is just the number of the degrees. Anyway, you get the first mark just for copying that from the front. Now rearrange that into a well-known phrase or saying. So obviously it's a quadratic, because you've got squared terms and ordinary terms. So I'll keep that. 2 cos squared x, bring that across, minus 5 cos x, oh, I forgot that there, minus 1 plus the 3 makes it plus 2 equals 0. Doing that, rearranging it into the standard quadratic form gets a mark, now factorise it. Now, it doesn't matter that it says cos x, it's just 2 variable squared minus 5 variable plus a number. So the answer will just be, what's the variable, what's the number, what's the variable, what's the number? So it's going to be some number of cos times cos. Well, there are two there. It can only be 2 cos x times cos x. That's the only way you can get a 2 cos squared x. Similarly, there are 2. A 2 can only be a 1 times a 2, whichever way round. The first times the first makes the first. The last times the last makes the last. It's the middle one that's the big mixture. So for the middle one, I want a 5. Well, if I put the 2 here, because it's the outer plus the inner, a 4 and a 1 can make a 5. So I'll put the 2 here, I'll put the 1 there. They're both the same, they have to make a negative, so that must be it. Now, that doesn't quite get the mark yet. You get the mark once you start solving it. So it's like there's two marks, yes. What? It should really be one for this and one for the two answers, but it's not. It's... The first one is do this and get the, one of the answers. So this answer would be, if that bracket was to come to zero, cos of x would have to be positive a half. So that gets a mark. Now, if this bracket was to come to zero, that means that cos x would have to be two. Now, that gets a mark, but that doesn't go any further. So this part has got no solution because a cosine can't get up to 2. could always put a reason at the side. Cos x has got to be between 1 and negative 1. It's got to be less than or equal to 1, greater than or equal to negative 1. So you can't get it to reach 2. This one's got a solution, though, and it's one that you should know because you should recognise a half. If you don't, just think of the triangle that involves 1s and 2s. That's your little 60-30 triangle. 1, 2, root 3... One's the smallest side, so it's opposite the smallest angle, that's the 30. So if the cosine is a half, that means the one's the adjacent side. One's adjacent to the 60, so that's a 60. So your two answers are going to be this then. So x, just x now, it's just a number, will be 60, but there's a whole range here. So you'd have to think, where else? Now, there's two ways of doing that. You can think of the table, or you could just think of the cosine graph. Where else could the cosine reach a value of a half? All sine tan cos. The acute angle is definitely 60. 
So one place is there. If it's to be positive, all sine, the cosine's only positive here, which means the other angle would have to be here. Those angles are the 60s. So you've either got this angle, which is 60, or the one all the way round, which is 360 minus 60. So there's your two answers. 60 or 300. That gets the final mark. Now the alternative to this sort of mnemonic here is just to put down what that represents, which is the graph. That's the one that really shows you the answer. The cosine graph looks like this. That's me reach 360 there. So if I want the answer that goes up to a half, I've got these two points. And of course, this is symmetrical. And if that turns out to be at 60, that would have to be 60 back because the whole thing's symmetrical about the centre, which is why you've got this, which is why you've got that table. But this picture really shows you the answers, though.